My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My mother immaculate, St. Joseph, my father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. Jesus, your Easter glory continues to fill the skies. And we rejoice in these days in the resurrection. The wonder and the beauty of the liturgy stretches the Easter celebration right through until tomorrow. We have a full week of essentially celebrating the same day. Whilst some people might think we are pressing the pause button, we are pressing the stretch button. We are getting the most amount of joy possible from this one tremendous event, the resurrection. And we see it in the liturgy, we see it in the gospel, we taste it also, perhaps after weeks of fasting, maybe we are enjoying the delights of chocolate or sweets, maybe a little drink of beer, wine, if that's allowed. We are today smelling it, smelling the resurrection, because all our senses are brought together in this one act of worship and glory, that you have risen from the dead. And why do we smell the resurrection today? Because of the aroma that comes to us in the gospel. We learn from Mark, we've waited all week to hear from St. Mark, and now he gives us this little snapshot of the resurrection on the Sunday morning. We have Mary of Magdalene, who is coming to the tomb, and she is there because she is coming to anoint your body, Jesus. We know that because you were crucified on the Friday in the haste that you will be buried before the Sabbath, in all likelihood, the disciples quickly put well, those two disciples that remained, we should say, Joseph of Arimathea, put your body into the tomb quickly without perhaps the religious ceremonies that the, the Jews took so seriously because it was important that your body be laid to rest before the Sabbath would begin. But now, very early on the morning, Sunday morning, we find Mary and others bringing costly ointments in order to anoint your body. And it's in the context of this journey to the tomb, this journey in order to anoint the body, that you appear to Mary of Magdalene and that she becomes the first witness to the resurrection. And Mark tells us that she who had, who had seven devils previously, and this is the only time we learn this detail in Mark's gospel, that she who had suffered so greatly as a result of sin and evil, that she had been completely liberated of that at one period in her life by you, Jesus. And now she is liberated again by the resurrection and liberated in order that she will become a witness, that she will go to tell the apostles themselves. And she is the one who has chosen out of all of the, the followers, this woman has the chance to become the first witness to the resurrection of which we are all partakers. But she's there because she's come to anoint your body. And so we smell this, this precious aroma that she carried in order to anoint your body, in order to treat your, your human remains, as she thought at that stage, with the utmost of respect. And perhaps she had gone first thing in order to purchase the oils that were required for the anointing of the body at the market. And so perhaps they had just been poured into the container with freshness. Perhaps even a little had seeped out of the container and it was in the, in the jar or in her hand, in the folds of her garment. And so this, this, this scene of kind of hurrying towards the, uh, the tomb must have been tremendously sad for her. And she carries this, this precious ointment but perhaps wasn't even aware of the smell because she was so enwrapped in her grief and so determined to partake in this religious duty in order to, to honour your body. But I like to think that in this moment when everything changed for her, perhaps she also smelt the, the ointment for the first time. 
and this smell of the, the ointment that she had carried in order to anoint your dead body becomes the ointment or the fragrance of the resurrection. Because you are not dead, you are alive, Jesus. And this, this aroma, this fragrance accompanies this great joy. And Mark tells us that she went immediately to those disciples who were mourning and in tears. They're still with the dead body. They're still in the phase of, of, of trying to cope with death. And perhaps she was running and maybe the ointment was kind of spilling everywhere because she just couldn't contain her joy at becoming the witness to the resurrection. And so the, the fragrance and the aroma of the resurrection, uh, it, it's so uh, abounding. Uh, and you think of her kind of bursting into the room of the disciples, smelling of this, this beautiful, precious ointment to proclaim that you are alive and that she has seen you. They're still in death. They can't get it, but she gets it. And this is the, the fragrance and the aroma of the resurrection, not just in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense. It is a joy that pervades. It's a joy that that, that goes beyond the death, that goes beyond even the senses of what they can see, of what they can feel. This is a greater joy because it comes from you, Lord. You have risen from the dead and that overcomes all things and helps us to battle through all the things that we are facing. But just thinking of this oil, I remember one time in the Holy Land opening a little tiny, tiny bottle of nard oil which was being sold en masse to pilgrims and tourists alike. And I'd never smelt it before, so just to get a, a sense of what it's like, I unscrewed the little bottle. And a tiny, tiny little bit of the fragrance whenever I opened the bottle was on my, my fingers, just from the rim of the bottle. Beautiful um, smelling scent. And satisfied as I was to just get that burst of the smell, I then closed the bottle and set it back. But for the rest of the day, my hands smelt of that beautiful nard. Now, that's what I can imagine with, with Mary Magdalene. If just the tiniest little bit of scent was enough to, to remain in my fingers for, for the rest of that day, how much more so with enough oil in order to anoint a body? It must have been such a beautiful perfume. And that's the fragrance that accompanies the resurrection. This, this beautiful smell that delights the senses. And her task is, is enormous. Her task is, is to go to become the one to first proclaim the resurrection, to say that you are alive. That's our task too. And we're given a kind of a special joy or a little impetus during this Easter week in order to do that. And that should become the fragrance of our life too. The fragrance that enlivens and enlightens everything we do. Isn't it true, brothers and sisters, that when we have the opportunity to share our faith or to help somebody come to the sacraments or help somebody understand a particular point of, of the faith or to pray, that brings us a different kind of joy. That brings us a kind of a lightness in our life. It's something which is completely attractive. That is the fragrance of the resurrection that perfumes our very existence. And there's another beautiful point to be drawn from Mark's account. Mary goes to proclaim the resurrection, but she doesn't have very much success amongst the disciples because they're, they're still stuck in mourning and death. And rightfully, Jesus, you reproach them for their incredulity and for their obstinacy because they had refused to believe. But even though she wasn't completely successful, she did it anyway. Because that's the fragrance that had enlivened not only her day, but her life from that point onwards. This is the lesson for us. We are people of the resurrection. This is the fragrance that gives meaning and sweetness to our life. That is what we are called to do, irrespective of whether we have great success or not at doing it. We are called to be witnesses. If Mary Magdalene couldn't even convince the disciples, couldn't even convince St. Peter, but she was undeterred, then so can we. Let us allow our lives to be beautifully fragrant with the resurrection and to share that joy with others. 
I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me during this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My mother, Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.